Apparently, I've been destroying this YouTube channel. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable. And just a warning, this is going to be a real chatty video. So if that's not your thing, I totally understand. Down below in the first comment I'm going to pin, I'm going to include a little TLDR or too long didn't read with a quick recap of what I talk about in this video. A lot of you have noticed that recently here on The Sewing Report, I reached 100,000 subscribers which is huge. That has been a long time goal of mine. And I've been doing this channel since February of 2016. So it took me seven years to get to this milestone. That's actually a pretty long time. In hindsight, I think there's a lot of things I could have done better. And something you may not know is that behind the scenes here, I've been really struggling with the channel, probably the, for the past couple of years my views have been pretty bad. Like not, they're, I've heard worse stories, but I've really struggled with the view situation, especially in proportion to how many subscribers I have on the channel. And in case you're kind of new here, in my previous life, I was a TV news producer. And I know some of you may be like, well, you know, that must have been a big advantage. Looking back on it now, I can say it has absolutely not been an advantage. I think it has been a big hindrance as to why it took me this long to get to 100,000 subscribers. I think I would have been better off with no broadcasting background at all. And I really see now as I'm kind of getting a bird's eye view that I think a lot of my like previous programming from working in media has been a big detriment to growing on YouTube. And I would say that all day long. Uh, so, okay, let's chat. This is also not really gonna be a very edited video. So I'm probably, there's probably gonna be like some screw ups or longer pauses in here. I don't know, but for all of you who've been supporting me all of these years, watching the videos and subscribing, I really want to say a huge thank you. Obviously I would not be here if you didn't watch the videos and if you didn't hit subscribe, and I really just am so grateful for that. And for, because of you, I that's allowed me to be in this situation and to be a full-time creator, which is honestly, it's a dream. Like I can't believe I do this as a living now. Now, in full transparency, I am not like making huge amounts of money on YouTube. I'm doing fine. I can pay my bills. I have very low living expenses, but if I had to rely just on the YouTube ad money, I wouldn't be able to do this and I would have to seek other avenues. Now I, I don't, so that's why it's possible for me to do the sewing report full time in addition to some other uh, side projects. I also produce a, another channel for one client that's, a fair, that's been pretty steady work for the past three years. I also am in several affiliate programs, I do the Etsy shop. And, uh, you know, I'm always looking, you know, this is technically a business and I'm always looking to improve my business acumen and find new ways of generating income because that makes it possible for me to put out these videos for free, which is the beautiful thing about YouTube. But my income in the past couple of years and my views have kind of been a bit stagnant. And that's where I really have been seeking some some help to figure it out. So recently I had a consultation with a longtime YouTube employee who recently left and now he's doing consulting. And this person was the head of content strategy. So if you're gonna talk to anybody about YouTube and understanding YouTube, that's the person to talk to. So I did a consultation because I've been really frustrated with trying to figure out why a lot of my videos just don't get a lot of views. So you may have noticed that too. I would say the views I'm getting on videos are not any better than when I had maybe 5,000 or 10,000 subscribers. And as a content creator, that is a bit deflating. You obviously, when you're spending so much time and energy on making these videos, you want there to be a larger audience and you want people to see the videos because if they don't, it kind of feels like it's uh, for nothing. So I had this consult 
and boy were my eyes open. I heard he told me a lot of things that I feel like I should have known and they seemed obvious, but until he actually said these things, I hadn't really considered them before, but they were things I really needed to hear and I, I went into this uh, phone call very open and ready to hear, you know, pretty much ready to be roasted. He was very nice, but he did tell me some things that I was really doing, that I'm doing wrong on the channel. So that's what this video is gonna be about and also just some changes are, you're going to be seeing here for sure because if I want to grow the channel and keep doing this, I obviously have to grow, grow in uh, viewership. If I don't, then I'm not going to, you know, this is not going to be a, subs a sustainable uh, creator existence if I can't do that. So, and that's been a problem. So basically what he told me is just from looking at the channel was that I was going in way too many different directions. And he also very specifically said that doing live streams on this channel has like just really killed it. Uh, so that was a little bit devastating, but also something I obviously needed to hear. And it made a lot of sense. So I, he also kind of pointed out, I'm trying to do way too many different like types of formats. You know, I've, I'll do like a tutorial video and then I'll do like a video about why I'm canceling my Craftsy subscription. Then I'll do like a live stream where I'm reacting to the latest sewing machines. And it really does seem very clear that 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 just mismatch of different types of content just long term is not a good strategy. So I think that was really, yeah, that was kind of the main takeaway. So we chatted for a while and he also like asked me some questions about what my goals for the channel were. And I told him my main goal for this channel is to reach as many people as possible get people excited about sewing, expand the sewing community. And I told him that while I obviously kind of need to care about money, making a lot of money is not my primary objective. And it's really not. I, If I had like all the money in the world, I would still keep doing this channel. And, and I love doing this channel. So I, he was kind of surprised to hear that because I think a lot of people do say like, yeah, I really want to make a lot of money. And I told him, I was like, look, I would be happy making a bit more money but I would be, and that would be great. Like, but I don't need to make a million dollars a year to be happy doing this. I personally would be extremely psyched, you know, to be, if I could break like six figures a year total. So, you know, I, again, I'm not doing, again, don't worry about my finances. My finances are fine, but I have never actually made over a $100,000 a year doing anything. And I told him if I could just do that, that's all, that's pretty much all I would need. I know in like 20 years, inflation's going to take over. So it's going to be like $500,000 a year. But for now I can, with what I'm making, I can pay all my bills and then some. So I'm not dissatisfied with my financial situation. So he was kind of like, okay, but we did talk quite a bit about the con my, obviously my content strategy and he told me I need to stop doing live streams on this channel. He said, that's clearly one of the big things that's really like kind of bottlenecking your growth. And he's like, I don't want you to just drown your, continue to drown your channel in all of these random types of videos and live streams and different types of content. Because uh, what's happening is that people will subscribe for one type of content. And then when I throw another p thing at them, they obviously are not interested because that's not what they subscribed for. And he explained that the subscriber count on YouTube. Now, again, I do want to point out that YouTube as a platform has really changed over the past few years. And what works in like 2018 probably isn't going to work in 2023. So if you want to keep growing as a creator, you really need to adapt and change your content to fit what YouTube, the platform wants. And uh, YouTube, the platform, wants you to kind of stick to a lane. 
and I'm just trying to like drive in too many different directions. He said I was doing way too much. He also kind of told me to like stop focusing on a lot of the other social media platforms. So I'm definitely going to take uh, that advice to heart. Uh, but you know, really the, the thing I need to do is for this channel, I need to really pick a specific format. Again, I don't, you know, I don't think he was saying that I, I can't do like both sewing and quilting videos, but I think when people come to this channel, they need to kind of know what they're getting. Sort of like how Mr. Beast, he'll cover different, he'll do lots of different types of video uh, topics, but the general format and the general like way of storytelling is more of a, more of a uh, set consistent thing. And I think that's what I need to figure out for the sewing report is a specific way of storytelling and then be consistent with that. So that's something I could use your help with. So if you can leave me a comment and I would love to know what your favorite, if you have a favorite video here at the sewing report, I would love to know what it is or fit, you know, favorite thing you've ever watched here. And also like what types of topics you, tuned into this channel for. That would be super helpful. That's why I threw out a poll on the community tab the other day, asking what your viewing consumption was like with live streams. And I did this right after the consult and 61, over 61% 61 of you who answered the poll said you never watch live streams. So I was like, okay, well that gives me a pretty clear indicator of uh, you know the viewing habits here. And I would guess that that number is probably a lot higher when you take into account the fact that a lot of people who have watched this channel are not gonna take the time to answer a poll or they've kind of already checked out of the channel. So what this YouTube guy told me was that if, if someone subscribes to a channel and then YouTube, the YouTube algorithm will serve up content to that person and if my next video is not something they're interested in and they don't click on it, if you get enough of those, YouTube altogether stops recommending your content to that viewer. And while they're technically still subscribed to their channel, they never see your stuff. So it's really like they're not even subscribed. So at this point, the subscriber thing is more, it's kind of more of a vanity metric and it doesn't really mean much because the really important thing to YouTube is views and watch time. So even, you know, so somebody might've just subscribed to the sewing report to be nice, which, you know, again, I really appreciate that too, but if they don't actually watch the content, like their actual viewing habits don't reflect that they're interested in the sewing report, then YouTube will stop showing them your content. So again, that makes a lot of sense. And I really probably should have figured that out a long time ago, but I'm really glad that I know now because I'm going to have to make some pretty drastic changes to the sewing report if I want to improve the channel. And again, I, I don't think anyone here on YouTube just quote unquote deserves views. I think you have to earn a view. I think you have to earn the trust of people who are watching your videos. I'm a firm believer in that and it's on me to make content you're interested in. You shouldn't be clicking on a video just because you feel like you have to or you wanna be nice. You should click on a video and watch it because it's something you actually want to watch. So clearly I have not been living up to my end of the bargain on making content that you wanna watch. And I think a big problem with all of that is that I'm just all over the place. So I really need to focus in on just kind of more of a specific lane. Now I did talk to this guy, I said, you know, something I also wanna share is that a few months ago, my husband and I invested a decent amount of money into building a live streaming dedicated computer. I do actually really like doing live streams and that's something I've enjoyed. I, you know, I kind of like how uh, interactive it is. I can chat with you guys and I can, you know, really get feedback in real time. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I can really be myself with live streams. So I asked this guy, I said, look, um, we just sunk some money into a live streaming PC. And I really wanted to try to ramp up my live streaming uh, content. 
this year. I said, what do you think about that? And he's like, um, he's like, if you were gonna, so I kind of, I kind of pitched him my idea for live streaming and he didn't poo poo it. He was like, you know, he's like, I can, I can see if you really like doing live streams and you, you know, you feel like you can add value there. Uh, he's, he said you, then you would need to pretty much just do live streams on the sewing report. So I was like, okay, well, I said, you know, what about this? What if I separate the content? And, um, he's like, you would have to create, like, if you wanted to do both types of content, you, he said, you can't do it on one channel. You have to separate them. He's like, and I know, I know he's like, yeah, you know, yet another thing to do another channel. Uh, but if I want to do any type of live content, he strongly recommended I do it on a new channel. So uh, that's what I've done. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is to tell you, I know I have like way too many channels and that's something, again, I need to work. He did tell me to really audit my workflow and try to streamline my like processes. So that's something I, I, I gotta do. I know it's real. This is, this is actually kind of embarrassing to talk about to be honest with you. So I have created a no, yet another channel. This one is called Sewing Report Live and it's pretty self-explanatory, but I am going to be really separating out the like edited videos from the live content. So my thought for this is that the live content will be like the stuff like, you know, I might have a guest on to talk to them. I might be doing more like the, and I, yeah, I definitely see a, kind of a clear distinction between like sewing and crafty videos where I'm making things. And then the other, on the flip side, the times where I'm talking about Cricut's uh, policies or craftsy policies or criticizing various companies within this sewing and cra crafting community, I think there's a place for that. And I do think that I can add value in that way by trying to hold, trying to report on what's happening but I absolutely see the need to make it a separate thing. So that content will live on Sewing Report Live. Currently this channel, I'm starting from scratch. I know it has zero subscribers. Uh, so I will link it down below in the description box and I will also link it down below in the comments. And if you enjoy that type of content, you like the live streams, you like kind of the more casual nature of it, which is something that I really like, you are welcome to subscribe, but I would also, tell you if you're watching this, if that's not your thing, not your jam, you don't like live streams, I get it. Do, do not feel like you should subscribe to that channel. If you don't actually like live streams or live content, then uh, stick with the sewing report and I'm gonna really try to do my best to make the content what, what you signed up for. So it's not just totally like a random mish, mishmash of stuff. Uh, so sewing report live, I see more of a place again to maybe do things in real time. And again, I think the, when I think about it, the formats between a video on demand or a VOD, like the edited videos in a live stream, they are way, way different. So there are some YouTubers I watch where I'll watch their live streams, but there are other YouTubers where I only wanna watch the edited videos. And, you know, just coming for, at this from a viewer standpoint, I, you know, I totally get that. So that's one of the big reasons why I'm going to be really trying to separate out those different buckets of formats so that they're not all like just squished together. So Sewing Report Live will be happening. I know, I know. I got to get to, you know, in order to get monetized, I need a, I need a thousand subscribers and a certain amount of watch time. I believe I can get there and I do believe it is worth investing some time into it. Uh, to grow that channel as well, just because I do think there is a real kind of a void or a need for that type of content. And with my background in journalism, hopefully I can help contribute to uh, reporting on industry news, reporting on the latest, uh, if there's new sewing machines out or if uh, something is happening that needs to be talked about, I can do it that way. The other thing I like about live stream is that I can really kind of react quickly. I don't need to spend weeks editing a video. I can just, you know, jump on a live and, and start, start talking with you. 
So I think that is one benefit to doing live streaming. Um, you know, and I can say this as a creator, the editing process takes for me forever. So again, if I, even if I'm live streaming for like three or four hours, which I've done, it, that's still less time consuming by far than editing a video. Some of my videos take weeks to make, like literally weeks to film and edit. And that's a really long time, but I can be a lot more agile with covering different topics via live streaming because, you know, I get, again, it takes like really nothing to just turn on, fire up the computer, turn on my camera, and then I can just go live just because editing takes just, oh, you have no idea. Editing takes forever. Uh, so sewing report live is where that type of content will live. Just more like the community news updates, things going on in the industry. I do plan to do some live like making things, but again, I think the format for that will be a lot different than my edited videos. And currently the plan is that if there are like, if I'm doing a six hour live streaming stream and I'm demonstrating something on the embroider machine or on a sewing machine, and I think it would add value to the main sewing report channel. I will plan to clip that section and then put that on the main channel because I know I've gotten some feedback in the past of people saying, Hey, you know what? Your live stream was three hours. I'd love like kind of a highlights reel. And I can definitely see a, some value in doing that type of thing. So I may be doing something like that or using clipping or using portions of a live stream within edited videos on the main channel. But I think doing this makes a lot of sense. It's going to be, guys, it's going to be a ton of work. I know it's going to be, a t but Hey, I'm willing to work my tush off for this. Like I'm willing to do YouTube literally forever. So I do not plan on stopping YouTube any time soon. I'm going to be doing this as long as I'm physically able to. And I'm really excited about that. And I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm one tenth. I, I can now say I'm one tenth of the way to 1 million subscribers. I really hope it doesn't take me like another 50 years to get to a million. I am like, guys, I'm all in on this. My jets are fired up. I'm not stopping and I'm just going to keep going. But I just kind of wanted to share with you what's been going on and it has been pretty frustrating. You know, it seems like no matter how many things I do here on the channel, like my views kind of are like capped out at a certain number. And I've been really for the longest time trying to figure out why. So I'm really glad I talked to this former YouTube employee. I think it made a ton of sense. So, and I do have a really cool idea for kicking off the Sewing Report Live channel. So if you wanna stay tuned to that, if that's something you're interested in, I've got, I've got something fun planned for the very first live stream. Because again, I do know there are a pretty decent number of you that do enjoy the live streams, but clearly from my poll and just from the actual behavior of viewers here, clearly most of the viewers here at the Sewing Report actually really don't like, don't really watch live streams. So, and I, after hearing that, thinking back on kind of like the trajectory of the channel, I do see where when I started to do live streams, stuff changed. So like if I had 5,000 subscribers at one point, I might get two or 3,000 views on a video versus right now, even with over 100,000 subscribers, I'm struggling to break 1,000 views on anything I do on this channel now. And you would, you would not, that's not something you would assume would be happening to a channel with 100,000 subscribers. Uh, but this, uh, my, you know, this person I consulted with said, I actually have a, only a fraction of those people are quote unquote active viewers. So I thought that was really interesting to hear again, kind of deflating, but I needed to hear it. So there are going to be some significant changes. And I would say creatively, like he asked me what my favorite video was or the video I was most proud of here on the channel. And I honestly couldn't tell him. Like I honestly had no idea. There are videos that have performed well here on the channel, but I wouldn't say those are like my favorite videos. I really like to be creative with filming and editing. And I feel like that's been kind of lost with everything going on too, that I have not made a video I've been like really excited about or really proud of in quite a long time. And I think that's something, I think that obviously has been reflective of the viewership too. So I really need to kind of take a step back for like a minute, 
regroup, figure out what types of videos I'm going to focus on here on the main channel. And it may not be what you signed up for. And if it's not, I totally understand. Uh, but I kind of need to, I kind of need to like pick a lane and stick to it here on the main channel. I think the Sewing Report Live is going to be more of like a, a little more of a free for all, but at least people going to that channel will know what they're signing up for. But I can absolutely see why my content strategy has been very problematic. So that's, you know, something I'm going to be working on this year. Anyways, I realize it's been kind of all over the place. I again wanted to thank all of you for watching this channel, leaving comments, supporting the Etsy shop, buying stuff from affiliate links. It really helps. And the other part of the equation is because of the types of content I do, it's been really hard, as I've talked about before, to try to work with anyone for like a sponsorship just because I will not do exclusivity clauses. I don't do non-disparagement clauses. I will not relinquish any type of creative or editorial control. And that really weeds out 99.9% .9 of any sort of uh, brand partnerships or sponsorships here on the channel. So it's been tough. And financially, again, that makes that really kind of leaves me in kind of a corner and I, I can absolutely see that. So those are some things that moving forward, I absolutely have to change. Otherwise I'm not going to be able to do this for, a, you know, for the, I mean, I plan to do this forever, but if I don't make changes and I don't see growth here on the channel, I, you know, I don't know how long this is sustainable, but again, I don't want this to be a downer video. I'm really excited about making some changes and I hope you are too. But, you know, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Also, if you have questions about like YouTube stuff, I'd be happy to answer that too. The channel's just gonna be looking a lot different moving forward and I didn't want you to be blindsided and be like, what the heck is going on? Uh, but again, I really appreciate every single one of you and I would not, I, and also I did order my silver play button award, so that will be coming soon. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty jazzed, I'm excited. And I'm, I'm not stopping guys. If you, you know, if you're sick of me, I, I you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to keep coming at you. Anyways, that's all for now. And I'm looking forward to a fantastic 2023 here on the Sewing Report and over on new channel Sewing Report Live. I'm Jen with the Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.